Hi, my name is Martin Moran. I'm from New York City, and I've been in India for three days. I feel like I'm high on drugs. This place is so electrified. But something that no one knows about me is that for the last three nights in my hotel, the Royal Yacht Club, the most colonial hotel I've ever, well, that I can imagine, I open the doors at 4 a.m. and look at the gateway to India, and uh, there's all these screeching birds. I think they're kipes. And I've been screeching out the window, answering the kipes at four in the morning in Bombay, thinking that I'm going crazy, but I love it here. In one way it is bec very lonely because when performance is difficult or when you feel like you're really failing, the greatest, one of the greatest things in the theater is to look another fellow actor in the eye and go, oh my God, are we, are we tanking here? Is this, does this suck? And there's no one to sort of say that to, but so it can be lonely in some ways as a performer, but in another way, in my solo shows, I talk directly with the audience, and it's extremely communal, and when it's going well, <laughs> it's actually uh, very comforting and healing and very communal, and I don't feel lonely at all. Just when it really is going badly, or I think it is, I feel utterly alone. Is it really, it's a, in some ways it's a bottomless question, I, I didn't think about it for years, what happened when I was a little boy, you know, around 12 years old, 13 years old. But it was much later in my 30s and 40s, I began to really reflect on what happened years ago. And I used to work with, a, I worked with a therapist, you know, psychiatrist, about when I began to tell the story. And I said, you know, I feel like I want to seek him out and confront him. And my therapist asked me, she said, well, what do you want from such an encounter? And I was never really able to answer except to say this one thing. I wanted to look the evidence in the face and say to him, this really happened, didn't it? And see the evidence nod yes. As an author, as a writer, what, what I'm always trying to do, what one is trying to do is circle an unsayable truth or to, to answer an unanswerable question. So the question of how far to go is, you go as far as the question takes you, which as a human being, the question is endless because the mystery of being human is unsolvable. So how far an author or a writer goes is as far as a human being goes all your life to continue seeking answers for meaning, I think, and for uh, also not just meaning, but how to express things in a way that reveal to your fellow human beings that when all is said and done, we are absolutely in this together and we are all trying to answer the same questions, which has basically to do with love, I think. That we're on this planet, we're all in it together, and between anger and compassion is this mystery of boundless love. Well, writing is one thing and performing is another. For me, writing, the best creative moment is after the first cup of coffee. Like if I have a quiet cup of coffee in the morning and the caffeine is just kicking in, but before I get anxious, that's when I write the best. So about an hour and a half after I wake up. You know, writing at its essence is a, a solitary art. Uh, at, its, at its deepest, I think. It's, there's a kind of heavy lifting or that happens when you're really s digging down and being so with yourself. That I find probably the most difficult but also the most rewarding. When it comes to acting, it, most of the time it's a collaborative art. There's the alchemy of being with someone else or with other people or with an audience. So you give each other energy and so acting is difficult in another way, nerves and uh, fear of failure in front of people in the moment. But uh, I would say they both have joys and they both have difficulties that are very different. And, but ultimately I find writing the most challenging and the most rewarding. Twitter just confuses me. I would have to say it's a love-hate relationship, mostly hate. 